In sports news, S.A. Brume has clinched Nigeria's first medal at the IAAF World Athletics Championship in Doha, Qatar, on the final day, winning bronze medal in the women's long jump final. She made a mark of 6.45 meters in her final attempt, but her first mark of 6.91 meters was enough to earn her third. She becomes the first Nigerian athlete to win a medal since blessing Okagbare's silver medal in the 2013 women's long jump final. IAF President Sebastian Ko says the competitions in Doha were extraordinary on the level of athletes' performance despite challenging conditions at the beginning of the event, adding that no one should limit aspirations to take the championships to new locations. He says the procedures in place, like medical services and other provisions, made all the challenges they faced manageable. Nobody is remotely suggesting that the road conditions weren't particularly at the beginning challenging. We haven't dealt with any severe um, cases. Uh, they were all manageable. Uh, and, yeah, it was a challenge. And the top athletes did come here well conditioned. They understood what those challenges were. And in large part, I think, have competed extraordinarily well. To the English Premier League, champions Manchester City were stunned at home as Adama Traore brace, Adama Traore's brace gave Wolverhampton Wanderers a 2-0 win at the Etihad Stadium earlier this evening. City struggled throughout the game to deal with Wolves' high press and they were thankful for Fernandino, who made a couple of crucial saves. For Chelsea, was their fourth win in eight games as the Blues thrashed Southampton four goals to one. The win moves Chelsea to fifth on the league table. David Luiz's early header proved enough for Arsenal to beat Bournemouth and move up to the third in the league. Matty Longstaff scored on his EPL debut as Newcastle piled more misery on Manchester United with a 1-0 victory at St. James's Park. U.S. media have reported a second whistleblower has come forward in the impeachment case against President Donald Trump. As of Friday, the New York Times reported that a second person was considering coming forward who had more direct information about the events surrounding the call. A second source has not yet filed an official complaint or spoken to the committee. However, the New York Times says the person spoke to the intelligence community's inspector general who has reportedly been seeking to collaborate to corroborate the first testimony, the White House insists that it has been open and it released a transcript of the call. That's the July 25th call after the concerns came to light. U.S. police are searching for suspects who shot and killed four people at a bar in Kansas City, the state of Kansas. Five other people were wounded during the incident at a members-only bar in the city center. The police department says the suspects were armed with handguns and fled the scene and are still continuing with investigations. They estimate about 40 people were inside the bar at the time of the shooting and have not released the identities of those killed, but say those, two of them are in their mid-20s, one in their mid-30s, and a fourth in their late 50s. The incident comes two months after major shootings in Texas and Ohio left 44 people dead. What should have been a peaceful march in Hong Kong degenerated into rioting with attacks on government offices, a metro station and businesses with ties to mainland China. Police used water cannon and tear gas and truncheons, reportedly removing masks from demonstrators. They arrested and a number of people were injured. Tens of thousands of protesters had turned out in the rain, spurred to act by a ban on wearing masks in rallies. Today's protests were fueled by both the mask ban and the use of, by force, use of force by police, uh, the use of live bullets and against protesters, which left two people injured this week. A wave of rioting on Friday. The city metro services uh, shut it down, but they had partially resumed today. And the main news again. The last batch of kidnapped victims abducted by bandits in Katina State have returned home after 45 days incarceration. 
Also today, three persons were kidnapped in Jalingo, the Taraba State Capital, while two others in Benin, the Edo State Capital. And a second whistleblower has emerged in the ongoing impeachment inquiry against United States President Donald Trump. That is the news of 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Obani. Good night.